In this video I'll be reviewing the G1W HD dashcam. I'll start off now by going through some of the specs of this little camera. This camera records in full 1080p at 30 frames a second and it comes with a built in G sensor for a crash situation to make sure that important clips are not overwritten. It records all the footage in the H.264 video format. All importantly it also has a very wide angle lens of 120 degrees which gives you a good field of view um, around your car when using this as a dash cam. This is a look at the back of the box that comes with the camera and these are some of the other specs of the device. So it's equipped with a 3 megapixel CMOS sensor. It has a 2.7 inch display in the back to allow you to actually view what's going on if you want. Um, there's also a HDMI output on the camera with the supplied cables that you can view videos on a HDMI equipped TV. It also can uh, take pictures, so it can take pictures up to 12 megapixels uh, and the quality is actually pretty good. It also records video in a wide variety of different formats. The format that I've used in this video is the full 1080 at 30 frames a second to capture as much quality as possible. The dash cam comes equipped with both a mic and a speaker built into the device. The speaker is for playback and the mic is for audio recording while inside the car. The quality of audio recording isn't exactly brilliant but the focus with this dash cam is more on the quality of the video than the audio. Some other things to note about this camera is that it's a very cheap camera to buy. It's about £35 delivered from several sellers on eBay. This camera will record audio and video in segments. So this means that it is a true dash cam and the fact that it will record video continuously to the point at which it fills your memory card. Once your memory card is filled it will then start to overwrite the oldest files on your memory card. This dash cam also gives reasonably good results at night time, particularly in areas which are well lit, such as driving within the city. Another feature of this camera which is worth making note of is the fact that it starts automatically if you connect it into your 12 volt supply. So you can leave the camera connected in your car all the time and it will automatically start when you uh, turn the key to the ignition. The other factor that makes this camera really good is the fact that it has an automatic shut off for the LCD screen also. So after three minutes you can configure the camera to shut off the LCD screen to avoid distraction for the driver. The camera also comes with plenty of accessories which I'll show in the unboxing. I'll now go through the unboxing of this little dash camera. So it's supplied in a, a box and uh, the camera itself comes supplied in a little bubble wrap pouch and then a smaller um, plastic pouch inside that. So it's got plenty of protection during shipping. On the back of the unit then you have four buttons to navigate the menus and you have that 2.7 inch LCD screen. On the left hand side of the unit there's a slot for a micro SD card. The size of the SD card that you're going to want to use with this device will depend on how much footage you want to record. It has a recording rate of 92 megabytes per minute which equates to about 5.5 gigs per hour. So if you want to record a really long journey you just have to bear that in mind. On the top of the camera, as the camera would sit inside the car then, you've got several ports and buttons. On the left hand side there you've got a mini USB input, you've got an AV output, you have a little port in the middle of the camera there for mounting into the mounting bracket which is a windscreen mount. You then also have a power button and a menu selection button. So the camera comes with several different accessories. It's supplied with a 12 volt cigarette charger with a pretty long lead. So it allows you to run it up around uh, and behind your rear view mirror. It comes with a HDMI lead. And it comes with a USB lead for connecting into your computer. And it also comes with a windscreen mount which has a ball joint in the end to allow you to position the camera whichever way suits within the car. It also comes with a manual which does have some English instructions included in it. I'll now show you some footage of a rural setting during daylight hours just to give an idea of how the camera will perform in the countryside during the day. So. This day in particular was a very murky day, it's kind of a grey day and there was obviously a lot of rain during the night. It was shot early in the morning and there's a lot of standing water on the road. So you can see here the camera copes well with both the darkness of the road and the 
the trees on the left hand side there and also the brightness of the sky and the foreground. So the camera performs pretty well under these kind of, kind of conditions. With this clip I did have to remove the audio because I had something rattling in the dashboard that was causing an annoying noise in the audio. So I've removed it for the purpose of this clip just to keep the uh, video watchable. This is another clip here just driving down a pier and one of the mistakes that I made when I first installed the dash cam was to have wiper blades that didn't wipe the screen completely clearly. So I have wiper blades that don't work correctly you'll get th th these kind of streaks across the screen which just ruin the quality of footage you get from the dash cam. So that's one thing to bear in mind while you're taking uh, footage on a dash cam just to keep your windscreen good and clean and wipe both the inside and outside with window cleaner and to also uh, make sure that your wiper blades are functioning correctly. This next clip just shows the same pier that I drove down earlier in the day but it's uh, a lot darker now and the weather conditions are a lot worse and there's a lot more rain. Because of all the rain and because it's darker now the image quality and video quality is a lot less so just to show you that effect I will do a picture in picture type comparison here now just showing the footage that we shot earlier in the day where it was much brighter of this pier and then I'll um, Put that side by side along with the footage that we're shooting now just of the pier uh, when it's a lot darker. In these next two clips I'll show you the footage that I shot just of some city driving during the day. So this footage was shot at around 5 o'clock in the evening during February, which means that it's not exactly fully bright and you can see there that some of the cars have their dipped headlights on. This kind of footage will show you just the ability of the camera to pick up things like number plates and whether indicators are on or off, and the position of other road users around you. It might be useful in the case of uh, an accident, say if somebody steps off the pavement in front of you or if a car pulls out in front of you. Um, particularly in the case where they would say that maybe you've ran into the back of them or something like that. Um, you can protect yourself from that potential claim with some of this footage. So in this clip here you can see the contrast between the brightness of the sky and the darkness of the ground. And the camera still works reasonably well in picking up the number of plates of the cars around it. And there's a lot of good definition still there, even though there's um, th there's quite a lot of difference between the brightness of the sky and the darkness. Um, so uh, there would be enough footage here really to, to provide you with evidence in the case of a claim or an accident. As a summary then for this camera, so it's a great camera, I would highly recommend it. It's very inexpensive to buy and it's the first uh, really cheap version of these cameras that I've seen that gives good quality footage. Um, so it's pretty easy to use once you set it up, it's, it basically can sit there and it works away in the background and you don't have to worry about um, adjusting it much. Periodically it might be worth just checking that it's still in the right position within the car and that it hasn't shifted at all. One of the cons of this camera is that it has a fairly obvious silver lens around which can be seen from the outside of the car. So if you want to cover that up you can just colour it in with a black marker just to try and make it a little bit uh, more inconspicuous from the outside. The footage that you get from this camera because of the wide angle lens you will also see a bit of a fish eye effect as you're driving along, something to bear in mind. 
and also the sound recording quality of this camera is not great it's not really designed for sound recording and the emphasis is really on the uh, the quality of the footage that you get from the video so just bear that in mind also if you're going to use the camera for other purposes